Hi everyone, in this video we will be going over the Kochev problem simple operations from the April cook-off. And so the problem statement is that we're given two strings S and R, and both of these strings have the same length N. And we want to make S equal to R by following this following operation. And this operation is that we, we can choose two integers A and B, and then from index A to index B, we can replace those characters in string S by the corresponding characters in string R. And so if we perform this operation k times, the total cost of the process would be k times the total number of characters that are replaced. And we want to find the minimum cost with which we can make S equal to R. So let's look at an example to better understand this problem. So let's say we had a string S with these characters, A, B, A, B, B, A, A, B, B. And string R is all A's. Then we notice that the characters in string S we need to change to make R is the B over here, the two B's over here, and the two B's over here. And so again, we can perform this operation of changing the characters of S to R from an index to another index. So let's say we were to perform this operation three times and for each of these three ranges that we have. So this operation will be applied to this range, this range, and this range. Then in this case, the number of positions we are changing would be one plus two plus two because it would be the sum of these positions. And so that would be five. So then our total cost would be K times L, which is 15. Now let's say we were to actually combine one of these ranges we have. So let's say we were to combine this first range with the second range. So now we notice that k becomes 2 because we're only performing operations on two ranges now since we combine two of them. And l, which is number of positions that are being changed, would increase by 1 because we are also adding in this character which was previously the gap between the two ranges. But since we joined the two ranges, it's also now a character that is going to be changed. So L becomes 6. And so now the total cost is 6 times 2, which is 12, which is actually less than the previous. So now let's try combining the entire thing. So let's try combining these two gaps we have here. And so now K becomes 1 because we're only performing one operation. And L which is again the number of positions changed, increases by 2 because now we have conjoined this range with this range. So now we also have to add in these two characters, which was the gap between the two ranges, as positions that are being changed. So L would increase by 2, so it becomes 8. And so now K times L is 8, which is smaller than 12 and 15. And so 8 would be our final answer because it is the minimum cost we can get. Okay, so let's go over our approach for solving this problem. So again, we notice that what we want to do is we want to keep track of K and L. And we know that as we keep on combining ranges, K will decrease and L will increase. So we want to keep on finding the new and updated values of K and L as we combine gaps. And so let's figure out how we can do this. So first of all, finding the initial K and L is not that bad because L would just be the number of characters in S that are not equal to the characters on, in R. So it would just be 5 in this case. And the initial K would just be the number of ranges we have to start off with, which is 3. And so now we want to keep on combining gaps. And to combine gaps, we first of all make this observation that we always want to combine the smallest gaps first. Because by combining the smallest gaps first, K decreases by 1, and L increases by a, the smallest amount possible. Because, for example, let's say we were to combine like a gap of 6 versus a gap of 2. Then by combining a gap of 6, then again, K would decrease by 1, but L would increase by 6. And if we were to combine a gap of 2, K would in decrease by 1, and L would increase by 2. And so obviously, it would be more optimal for L to in increase by the least amount possible with each iteration we do. And so therefore, we always want to combine the smallest gaps possible. And so this means that we need to keep track of the gaps. So 
we would have a Q and we can just keep on adding the gap lengths as we iterate through the string S. So then the gap lengths would be one for this and two for this. And so we would also want to sort this because again, we want to always combine the smallest gaps first. Okay, so we know that with each iteration, K would decrease by one and then L would increase by the gap length. And so when we sort, then we can just keep on taking off elements and adding that to L. So first L would be, L would start off being five and then L would become six. If we were to add the one, uh, then it would become eight. If we were to add the next element, just two. So we keep on adding to L by adding the gap length and we keep on decreasing K by one. And so as we do this, we keep on calculating K times L and we want to take the minimum of all the k's times l's we calculate. And so that would be our approach to solving this problem. So again, we first calculate the initial l and k. Then we want to keep track of all the gaps and we want to add them to a q and sort that q. And then as we go through to find the new k's and l's, we would keep on decreasing k by 1 and increasing l by the gap sizes. Okay, so we're going to be going over the code now. And so I wrote out the three steps we're going to be doing. And so one thing is that we're adding the gaps to a vector and not a Q like I accidentally said. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create two variables for the strings A and B. And then we're going to input both those strings. And then I also created a variable N for the size of the strings. And so the first things we want to do is we want to find the initial K and L. And we also want to find the gap lengths and add them to a vector. So one thing I forgot to mention is that let's look at this example where we have a string S and a string P. And so we notice that we're only taking the gaps from here and from here, but we do not take the gap in the beginning. And so that's important to know because that means that when we're adding gaps to our vector, we want to skip the very first gap if there is one because that does not matter to us. Okay, so now let's code steps one and two. So we're going to create two variables to represent n and k. So that would be long, long L equals zero and K is equal to zero as well. And then we're going to create a variable for each of the gap lengths. So it would just be equal to zero. And then we're also going to create a vector for the gaps. And so to account for not using the first gap, we're going to actually create a Boolean variable as well. That's going to be called can do gaps. And so we'll set this to true when we can actually start counting gaps, which is after we've encount encountered our first range. So now let's iterate through the string. And so there's two cases here, either a of i is equal to b of i, or a of i is not equal to b of i. And we know that whenever a of i is equal to b of i, we've encountered a gap, and otherwise we've encountered a new range. So again, let's account for the fact that we cannot use the first gap we find. And so only when a of i is not equal to b of i, only when we've encountered our first range can we actually start counting gaps. So here we can set can do gaps to equal true. And then if can do gaps, then that's only when we can start increasing gap length. Okay, so we know that as we are going through a gap, when we first encounter a element that is not equal to each other, then we know that the gap has ended. So we can add to our else statement that if gap length is greater than zero, then we can end the gap and we can add it to the gaps vector. And then we would initialize gap length to be zero again for the next gap. And so now we've accounted for the gaps. So now let's look at L and K. So we know that L is just the number of elements that are not equal to each other. So we can just add L plus plus to the L statement. So whenever we encounter two elements that are not equal to each other, then we increment L. Um, but for K, it's a bit different because we increment K when we found a new range. And so we found a new range when we've ended a gap. So then we can increment K over here. But what we also need to add is we need to add that if we can't do gaps, then k plus plus. So what this means is that the first time we encounter a element that is not equal to each other, we need to increment k because that means that we have found our first range. And so all this code accounts for steps one and two. And the last thing we need to do 
is we need to sort the gaps vector. So we would just do sort gaps.begin and gaps.end. Okay, so now let's move on to step three. And so for step three, we're going to be iterating through the vector and updating KNL. So for each of the gap lengths and gaps, we want to decrease K by one, and we also want to increase L by the gap length. And so this is just like how we discussed in the example we went through. And so I'm actually going to create a variable that refers to the answer, and we're going to initialize it to the product of L and K, the initial L and K product. And so we know that as we go through each of the gap lengths and we update K and L, we want to update answer to be the minimum of what it is currently, and also the updated L and K value product. And so then at the end, we can see out answer. And so this is the code for solving this problem.